Hey there, I'm John Soskovich, and part of being a chicken farmer, raising chickens for meat, is freezing chickens. This is a very granular video for people who are already in it and are freezing birds, and just showing you what my process is. May work for you, may not, let's find out. So when I come home from the processor, I have my chickens on ice in coolers. So they're in these big coolers on ice and those melt over time and there's some water at the bottom. So before I even bring the coolers into my inside area, I bring them outside and open the cooler and let the water drain out in an area where it's not gonna be any human foot traffic. It's raw chicken. Remember this entire time you're dealing with raw chicken. Uh, so I drain all the water out and then I come inside. Now even backtracking before that, I've gone through and as I empty freezers, I unplug them, let them thaw, bleach them, clean them out between every use. And the reason why I have so many chest freezers is so that I can rotate them in and out and always keep my coolers clean and turn it over and double check the temperatures and make sure everything is running smoothly. You want a very safe food product for your customers and that you know always comes first. So where I'm standing, I have a dedicated space on my farm that I have just the freezers. Nothing else comes in here, nothing else goes out besides just product into freezers, and then you know it goes out to customers from here, but nothing else in here except for these freezers, and I keep it as clean as possible because you don't want anything to contaminate what you've got going on. You put all that work into raising that chicken, you're gonna wanna eat it, and you're gonna want it not to get dirty in the process. Some of the things that we're gonna need for my process is pen and a paper, track down the sheets. As I'm putting the birds into the freezer, I write down what the weights are and what the cut of bird is. We do split birds, we do whole birds, we do birds that are cut up, we get giblets back. So writing down what's coming back, how much it weighs, and that'll help give me a feed to conversion ratio where how many pounds of feed yields how many pounds of meat, and it lets me know over time through tracking my data whether I'm doing things efficiently, whether I may have a food problem, whether I may have a bird and breed problem. The more information you can take down as you go, and this is just building into your processes, uh, the more likely you are going to find to the more likely you are going to be able to find any problems along the way. Whew, it's a long day so far. Some of the other things that I have on me. I have scissors, again, cleaned with bleach ahead of time, disinfected, and after every use, I disinfect them. You wanna keep these clean, these can get dirty, handling raw chicken, come on, we got it. All right, I'm sorry. And then, believe it or not, a towel. Uh, a towel, or you could use disposable uh, paper towels, uh, something that you're gonna use once, and then either wash immediately or throw out. Remember, food, contamination, all that stuff, uh, the towels work for me just to not waste a ton of paper towels, but I swap out a lot of towels as I'm going. The reason why I have these things is that this is what my chicken looks like when it comes back. I got this whole bird in a shrink wrap bag with its little tail. Now, this little tail, great for picking it up as a handle when you're pulling it out of the freezer. Bad because if you're bringing them home on ice or if you have them uh, in any kind of water or wet area, water stays inside this little tuft and then as you pack them in, it leaks out and the birds freeze together in your freezer. Uh, I added this step because I found this out the hard way and had a bunch of birds frozen together and either you break the packaging, you rip the labels off, you damage the product in some way, trying to rip those birds apart or you have to partially thaw it which then gets then to your freezer temperatures and food safety. Remember, raw chicken. Don't get anybody sick. <laughs> Uh, so what I'll do is take the scissors and cut that little tuft about there, there, uh, and then as I'm bring, putting it into the freezer, I will uh, wipe it down, make sure it's dry, and then put it in the freezer and let it uh, freeze and not stick to the other chickens. Now I'm going to show you a stop motion, just speed things up a little bit, time lapse of me. Uh, doing the whole entire process, just running through the birds uh, without having to try to think about talking on camera at the same time. Uh, let's go to that. I'll give you a voiceover. It's going to be awesome. All right, let's jump right into it. So I only go through and 
trim those little excess pieces of plastic off of one layer of birds at the time at a time so that I can keep track of how many birds I have and write them down on my sheet without either not counting some birds or double counting some birds or handling the product too much. Uh, I'm only doing one layer at the cooler at a time so that I can keep accurate records as I go. And I'm also only freezing one to two layers of birds at a time. It's less uh, less of a thing with the stand-up freezer because you know there's shelves. But with those big chest freezers, if you tried to freeze a thousand pounds of meat at the same time, the chicken on the inside would not freeze as quickly as the birds on the outside. And then you would have, you know, there's again, potential for food safety stuff. You want your birds to be frozen as quickly as possible. Uh, if you're gonna freeze them, get it done. So I'll go through as I empty my coolers. I won't do all a thousand pounds of chicken at once, all 240 birds. Uh, I'll go through and do one to two layers, let them freeze completely, come back, freeze some more. Don't ever try to freeze uh, an entire chest freezer's worth of meat at once. You're going to end up with soft meat in the middle, uh, and that's just no good. You'll also note real quick that I have a generator up in that corner there, uh, and other than that, the room is pretty clean. I keep that generator around in case a freezer goes down, or in case the electricity goes down, I can run a freezer or two uh, in the middle of summer. Always better than losing product. Even if I can't run them all at once, uh, I can run them in rotation and then uh, you know keep my meat frozen. And because I'm not freezing them all at once, every time I go in to freeze birds, I'm using new materials. I clean my scissors. Uh, I clean the coolers out afterwards. Cleanliness is the name of the game. Uh, food safety, as much as you can. Uh, it's good for your insurance. It's good for your customers. It's good for your own mental health, just to make sure you're doing a good job. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope it helped. Remember that I have these big coolers and they work for me, but I would in the future buy smaller coolers and there's things about my system I would change if I wasn't US, going to a USDA processor or if I was processing on farm. This is just let you know a little bit of how I do things and you can compare and contrast with your own scenario. Take what details make sense for you and leave the rest on YouTube. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Subscribe to the channel for future updates. And until next time, I will see you out in the field.